I mean, to get in into that car, man, 10 years, it, it, was, it was a blast flag. every go, time. Go, go. Johnny O'Connell inducted into the Sebring Hall of Fame this weekend and rightfully and deservedly so as well will be part of the team on ABC for our highlights show tomorrow from the 60th anniversary running of Mobile One 12 hours of Sebring check local listings for details Timo Bernard leads out with uh, over nine seconds at the line between himself and Alan McNish the next car back uh, is the number 12 of Neil Yarny, who's uh, dropped a couple of three laps back, and, there, yes. and there's the traffic jam. <laughs> oh, goodness me. There's a lot of discipline required here, I can tell you. I mean, you know, it, this, you've really got to be you know, have your wits about you because there's a lot of oh, you know, performance dif differentiation between these cars amongst that pack. Amongst that pack there. Look at that. Oh, my goodness me. That number one car just back out of the paddock area had yeah. gearbox problems and number 15 now Guillaume Fessler. Moreau uh, Fessler in the Audi Guillaume Moreau in the 15 Oak racing car they got themselves back up to 8th place overall another pit lane speed violation being picked up for the 1-8 car the 18 car performance tech motorsports in PC it's the first time we've called that car's name as far as the penalties are. Yeah, they had some, they've obviously had some problems. They're quite a few laps down. Down in eighth place in PC. Class now has been led by... Uh, oh, my goodness, three wide yes. through the apex of the corner. I remember what Marino Franchini was telling us earlier on. Everything is focused at the apex of the corner because of the narrow performance differences between the different types of cars. It's actually... Oh, you've got to be patient no. just got to be patient I, I, but the thing is you're there Jeremy crazy, you can't disappear can no, you no exactly it, it's not the beam me up Scotty situation I'm sure plenty of people would love to be just to uh, clarify this Alex Popow now is leading in PC in the 06 car for court order sports second place is uh, young Pablo Sanchez from Mexico has been a revelation in the number seven car for the uh, brand new team. And there is the leader in PC just going through the centre of the shot, the 06 car. Merchant Services Racing running two cars here, and uh, one of them, car, the car number seven, in second place. And Ken Dobson now for PR1 Motorsports with, uh, with Matheson Motorsports, running third in PC. Side by side action as we try again to go three wide. That was the Black Swan car. I hate to borrow anyone else's Ooh, phraseology as we went four wide there, yeah. for a moment, but our friends on the stock car circuit always say yellows breed yellows, and this is why. <laughs> look at that. Now, in fairness, our camera makes it look slightly closer than it is, but not yeah. much. <laughs> That's a very wide angle yes, lens. It is. Oh, and there we are. That is the five car. Oh, no. That's Roger Wills, fourth place in PC for the Muscle Milk car. You're sharing that car, car with Memo Gidley and Michael Guash are going to be oh, the full-season drivers. Look at this, almost come to a standstill down in turn seven. And I got that the wrong way around. Because it's a wide-angle lens, it's actually much closer than you think it is, particularly in terms of linear. Side by side is pretty much the same, but as close as those cars were, they would have been right tucked up under the rear wing of the number 03 when we saw them the first time. It's the Kiwi driver there, Roger Wills, a, a, a long-time mm -hmm. vintage car driver and done quite a lot of professional racing as well, or semi-professional mm -hmm. racing over the last few years, but he's damaged, obviously, the suspension left, of my car. What a disaster. Yeah, left rear suspension damage and uh, rear wing that is not as aerodynamically yeah. efficient as perhaps it was when it left Orica. Uh, let's uh, go down to the pick, Richard. Bill. Yeah, I just want to talk about how frustrating it is for this team. To be honest with you, they had high hopes coming into this race. Interesting thing they were able to do, they found out early they were going to put the team together, and so as a result, they had some test days that they scheduled before they were an official entrant. Normally, they only get six test days, but because they did them before they were an official entrant, they got extra test days because no one keeps track of people who aren't official entrants. So once again, they came in, they had high hopes, they thought everything was sorted, they had a good car running with the Muscle Milk folks, they thought they had had everything in hand but once again anything can happen in 12 hours and I you're probably gonna say that you get here we're gonna fuel the car and then we're gonna go behind the wall we're gonna have you drive it behind the wall you're gonna go down towards the pit out turn right straight across 
and turn right again into the paddock down. Uh, they'll be able to use it. Let's uh, take you back 24 hours, actually, and have a look to see what happened on board with Christophe Bouchou. Marino? Yeah, he just clips inside wall. Obviously, he sees the car out of the corner of his eyes coming onto the track, and he's probably thinking more about that than the apex. And it's always important to get your line right at one, but having just done a few laps, it seems even more important this year. You have to be really precise. Oh, no! Oh, no. Left rear wheel is missing on that Aston Martin at the hairpin. That was the third place car of uh, the fourth place car of Darren Turner, and it is stationary. What a disaster for what had been a good run being put together for Aston Martin Racing. The safety car has been deployed. Fourth place in GT. The left rear has gone completely. It was clear from that other shot. Now it looks like the hub's still there. I was so going to say like the hub's still there. Off. Yeah. There's no damage behind it. Well, he hasn't just pitted. I think so. Darren, uh, that, that's B. A. is our cameraman down there. He's got years of experience, and he's had a bit of had a bit of action down there to deal with. Uh, and but he had to dodge a dodger bouncing tire. Let's have a look in the distance here. Yeah, they did. There There's it comes the car. Here's the yeah. yeah. Photographers don't move, and B. A. just makes sure that he gets it right in the middle of the lens that is professionalism and oh, that is unbelievable the that is energy the, exactly that wheels have. Well, i'll tell you what there's a road over there that is out of the ballpark that's a ground rail double there yeah. isn't it uh, i think in uh, sure that the uh, in the baseball parlance of the windscreen and as the camera pulled back is about where Alan's head is oh and dear me that is the 025 the Dempsey racing car and the front wheels are at a very odd oh, angle toe in you call that yeah that's going to bring out a full course caution is that down at uh, BA again no it's not it's over the other side of the circuit and look at the debris field that it's brought out now that's a that's very bad news indeed because that car was going so well earlier on. It's only Richard there. Normally a safe pair of hands. Look in the background, he gets tagged. Mm. Oh my goodness me, almost gets airborne. And the car comes down, and that is the 18 car. 18 car. Yeah, absolutely. He, he didn't seem to be aware of the, the red PC car there on his left side, and he tried to change position, and yeah, got turned around. That's the Performance Tech Motorsports car that was there. Yeah, both of those two cars have been delayed uh, for various reasons within the last a few hours of the race, and uh, boy, that's a big impact there for Henri Richard. Good to see him there hopping around and walking around. He's, he's absolutely fine, but boy, that was a scary moment. Let's have a look at this again with Marino Franchitti sitting alongside us, watching the right side of the screen. Yeah. So I think Henri's just unaware that the other car's there, so he come, he's looking around on the car in front tries to move to the left to take the line for the corner but is uh you know the the red car is there so that could be quite this could be quite a long yellow if they have to repair the wall there paulie mccauley on the camera not flinching for a moment there he is on the platform he's somewhat exposed in fairness there and he's done a pretty good job to stay on that but uh, that's why we get such great shots and good opportunity to say thanks to all of our camera guys and girls around the circuit out in the weather out in the sunshine and bringing you the phenomenal coverage that we've had already came in from the lead he's lost that to Romain Dumas who presumably will pick next time around and Dindo is back out oh and off oh that is Whoa. the 30 car now this has been one of the leading cars in GTC it was uh, either first or second when this accident happened and it is thumbs up from the driver yeah, who is Enrique Cisneros well that is a fabulous break for Dindo having just got his pit Again, stop in. That's exactly what happened oh. last round of pit stops. So with Manish. Yeah, with Manish, he came in, went out again, and then he came out. That is straight on at... I think that's 13. 13, yeah. Uh, I can't... Well, I can see a little bit of of black marks behind the car, but it, he might have uh, been helped off to that. 
You know, about an hour ago, I was down there talking with the team, and I asked, how are things going? And they said, don't talk to us now. Talk to us in five hours. You know what an endurance race is like. Anything can happen over a course of time, and that's exactly what happened. The, the worst part for this team is they had actually overcome a series of little minor problems, little teeny things that will spend a little extra time in the pits, but enough that it didn't cause a serious problem. Well, now they're going to have to deal with something a little more major. Yeah, fair point, actually. We saw that car lead a lot of laps early on in the race, and it's now the uh, 023 car, uh, the uh, Alex Joe racing car that's in the lead of the class. Whoa. Oh, uh, look at that. Right. I, I, I'm not sure he had any retardation at all there, or if he did, he may have been fighting against a, a stuck throttle or something. But that's a scary moment for Enrique Cisneros, uh, stalwart of this uh, GTC and indeed the IMSA GT3 category over the last couple of seasons. Glad to see that he got himself. Nice to see he put his thumb up as well as soon as uh, he gathered his thoughts, just to let everybody know he was all right. And again, tyres have done their job. That is called energy dissipation. Yeah, Cisneros, he won the GT3 Cup. Uh, Platinum Challenge class in 2010. So, yeah, as you say, you know, a fair bit of experience now he's gained over the last two or three years in Porsche and a pretty accomplished pilot. That uh, 023 car that uh, is now leading the category, of course, that's an interesting one because Townsend Bell and Bill Swedler are two of the drivers who will be driving the Lotus Evora. And uh, Townsend just getting a bit of experience in the series before the Alex Job Lotus Evora comes on. Well, the tyres have dissipated that energy, but the wall has moved a little bit. And that car's gone in there pretty deep. Imagine if the tyres hadn't been there. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, and you can't see much. Oh, that's what I was. Of, that's of what I said. Up, yeah. Can you? That's what I said. I think this will be quite a long yellow because they're going to have to rebuild that wall. Yeah. The, the tyre wall, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the wall itself, but the actual tyre wall. Yeah. yeah. It's going to. It's going to be quite a long yellow. You see that the tyres are banded and fastened together in groups of two there, and then laid in front of each other and not fastened together. A lot of people ask why that is, and wouldn't it not? It's exactly the point that they want them to move and to dissipate that energy. Yeah. Uh, and it, it works. It's all. It sometimes looks a little bit old-fashioned and a bit Heath Robinson, but if you've ever hit the tyres and and then ever hit concrete, trust me, you'll take the tyres every time, won't you? Absolutely, absolutely.